Watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Uh, let's go, let's go. It's time to get in the zone. The Friday Night Lights are on. We got Justin Glenn as your host. Down to the whistle so close. Here come the highlights to show. Everyone talks about how we can't compete with indie schools. We just got to play like it's our last game. We don't want to be overconfident, but you definitely want to have confident. We want to have some swagger. You can't overlook any team, you know. It's a different week every single week. Being in this position right now really means a lot to us. It's really just about stepping up and everyone playing hard. It really allows us to just know that we have these people behind us. We're all a family first before we're a team and then that's the biggest thing. Friday nights in the zone. Friday nights in the zone. Friday nights in the zone. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh baby, we are down to the final four in more ways than one. It is semi state, so coming into tonight, only four teams alive in each class throughout the state of Indiana, and locally, only four teams with a chance to make it to Lucas Oil Stadium. Now, that's Carroll, Snyder, Lures, and Adams Central. Two teams on the road, two teams at home. We're going to start tonight in the Summit City. Now, your game of the week was Snyder Valpo, but circumstances tell us we should start somewhere else and we'll do just that. Last week, Carroll won the first ever 6A regional title for a local team. Could the Chargers take it a step further? Punch their ticket to state. Fifth ranked Carroll hosting number one Hamilton Southeastern after a 69 yard play for, to Jaden Hill for a first down. Fourth and goal from the one right out of the gate for the Chargers. They go for it and Braden Steely pounds his way home. The man of steel giving the blue a seven sip. 7 zip lead. Second quarter, still 7 0. It's Griffin Haas with the touchdown for HSC, but the PAT is no good, so Carroll's still in the lead, now up 7 6. Later, it's Carroll special teams looking real special. They block the punt. Jorge Valdez recovers at the 15, and on the very next play, who are you going to give it to? How about Braden Steely? Looked like he might have thought about passing that one, but cuts it back, and he is in for a 15-yard touchdown, and the Chargers up 14-6 to in the second quarter on the number one team in the state. But, hey, they're number one for a reason. No give up in this squad right before the half. Ty Bradle to Donovan Hamilton. That is a pretty pitch and catch for a touchdown, but it's Carroll up 14-12 to at the half. Third quarter, how about some trickeration? Jaden Hill with the direct snap in for the touchdown, and Carroll leads 21 to 12. HSC would get a field goal, but no more as Carroll is heading to the 6A state championship game. The Chargers take care of top ranked HSE by a final of 21 to 15. You know, it's a whole lot of excitement, you know. Uh, I can't really talk about a lot of it right now. It's like I can't even explain the words right now to like describe how I feel right now. I don't know. Feeling hasn't set in yet. Yeah, I don't even know. You know, this is unbelievable. I mean, never been done before. Uh, 13 and L. You know, for a guy up there, uh, just feels feels amazing. Still hasn't hit, but you know, on cloud nine right now. And tonight we played the number one team in the state, you know, and, and we played hard all all phases of the game, you know, and, and, and did our job, did our job defensively, gave up a couple of big plays, but, uh, you know, I couldn't be prouder of our players. I couldn't be, you know, more proud of the, of the Carroll community. Um, and we got this opportunity, the opportunity to go down to Lucas Oil and play for a state championship. Oh, yeah, Carroll repping the 2 6 0. Oh, they're going to get Center Grove for the 6 8 title next Friday night, 7 o'clock at Lucas Oil Stadium. Josh Ann's going to be there. As for now, he's here in studio with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Josh. All right, Glenn. Last week, the Snyder Panthers showing the heart of a champion. Down 21 0 late in the second quarter, the Panthers coming all the way back to beat Mishawaka on the road 41 27, clinching a 5 A regional title on Friday. Kirk Tippmann and company hoping for a smoother start, hosting the Vikings of Valparaiso. Valpo at Snyder, it's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Panthers looking to earn their first semi-state crown since 2015. Valpo, definitely no slouch. The Vikings beating a good Merrillville team by one point last Friday to get to this stage. But on the first drive for Valpo, the Vikings denied a field goal after the Panthers blocked this kick, and it is scoreless after one quarter. Now in the second, Valpo. Thinking they've got Langston level all bottled up. 
think again. Level, the senior, breaking loose for a 41-yard touchdown. That's the only points of the half. Snyder leading 7-0 heading into the third quarter. Now Valpo does score a touchdown of their own, but Luke Hoppert finding Lincoln Burks in the end zone. That's a grab by the tight end. 14-6, Snyder in front now, but Valpo just not going away. Fourth quarter, Travis Davis just running all over the Snyder defense in the fourth quarter here. He gets the touchdown. He also scores a two-point conversion to tie things up at 14. That is the score at end of regulation. So to overtime we go. Snyder scores a touchdown to make it 21 to 14. And the Panthers just need a stop on fourth down. But Justin Clark eluding the entire Snyder defense, leaping into the goal line. Now Falpo going for the gusto on top of that. Two-point conversion for the win, and it's Davis right up the middle. And Snyder falls in heartbreaking fashion, losing 22 to 21. Well, we're proud of our effort. We just, you know, that Valpo, to their credit, made a few more plays than we did, and, um, you know, they deserve to win. And, you know, it's, but we're proud of our guys, you know, seniors especially, um, fought their hearts out all year, you know, very good season. Uh, we just came up short of what, you know, we had as goals. And that's hard to swallow, but uh, that's all, also part of competition. Heartbreaking end for Snyder. They finished the season 11 and 2. Glenn. Take it away. Okay, let's go to 1A. Adam Central on the road at North Judson. A rematch of last year's semi-state game where the Jets say, hey, they dominated the Blue Jays 42-7. This one much the same. Second quarter, no score. Ryan Black. Oh, we've seen him do it his entire career at AC. The quarterback into the end zone. And it's 7-0 AC in the lead on the road. Plenty more where that came from offensively. This is Keegan Bloom. And, ooh, did you see the stiff arm? Bloom goes the dynamite. He's off to the races. Ain't nobody going to catch Keegan Bloom. It's a touchdown. 14 to zip AC. Now, North Judson, right before the half, matriculating the football down the field. They've got an opportunity near the goal line, but the D standing tall. Pass deflected. Zach Worm gets a hand on it. It ends up in the hands of who else but Keegan Bloom. That's an interception to keep North Judson scoreless. It was 14-0 at the half. Third quarter, Ryan Black again. Black finding Green. He's into the end zone for a touchdown. That makes it 21-zip, and Adam Central goes on to win this one. 35 to nothing. The Jets are headed back to the 1A state championship game for the second year in a row. I'm super happy, you know. There's no emotion. There's no word to describe how I feel right now. I'm super elated, you know. I just can't be more prouder of the guys, the big boys up front blocking for me, you know. Yeah, obviously, semi-state's a big game for everybody, and we knew coming in it was going to be down in the trenches most of the game. We just had to power it through for four quarters. We haven't done that in a while, but I think we did a good job for four quarters. We got a lot of community support, and that just seems to fuel um, really the success of, of the culture that we have, and, and, and they believe in it. They, they believe in it, and they execute, and they do the things we want them to do. All right, next up, Adam Central will face Indianapolis Lutheran at 11 o'clock Saturday. And that is a rematch of last year's state championship game where the Jets fell in a good one, 34-28. Let's go to 2A football. Lewis fresh off the program's 21st regional title. The Knights making the long drive to Merrillville to face the reigning state champ, Andrean 59ers. We picked this one up with Andrean's defense in the first quarter. It's an interception, Antonio Barnes. We're talking pick six. That's not how Lures wanted to start this game. 7-0, Andrean in the lead. Now 21-6 in the second, right before halftime. Actually, uh, 45 seconds to go before halftime. It is Charlie Stansky to Wes Javens for a touchdown. 21-13 at that point, but just 33 seconds later, we're talking just ticks before the half. It's Drake Bowen, the Notre Dame commit, pounding one in. And Lewis's season ends on the road at Andre and 48 to 29. The Knights finish the season with an 8 and 6 record. Well, that is going to do it for football tonight. But when we come back, we are going to hit the hardwood for IU the Hoosiers with their first road game of the season. Notre Dame and the Mastodons in action as well. So we got a lot of college hoops plus high school girls basketball homestead at home against the Concordia Cadets, Blackhawk and Norwell. Clashing at the castle, and it's a rivalry renewed in DeKalb County. We're talking the Barons. We're talking the Railroaders. Those games and more coming your way in the Highlight Zone. We're the Adam Central Jets coming at you from North Judson, and stay tuned for more Highlight Zone. <laughs> So 
So far, so good for Homestead in the post Ayotta Patterson era. Coming into tonight, the Spartans off to a 4 0 start, and that includes wins over Wayne and Norwell at the newly christened Spartan Arena. Uh, that's where we start our girls' basketball coverage as Homestead ranked seventh in the latest 4 A state poll. Concordia looking to knock them off here in Coach Nicole Bollinger's second season, but it's going to be tough. Some new names, but some good players. The youngster, Maya Epps. She's going to have a heck of a career for the Spartans. Buries the three. Homestead jumps out to a 10-zip lead. Not what Concordia wanted, but they do get on the board here. That's a long three from Kaylin Ortiz, and it's a 10-3 ball game. Coming the other way, you'll see Brooklyn Freen with the pilfer and the pair for number 44. Homestead up by six. Then at the end of the first quarter, it's Claire Landrigan. Watch her beat the buzzer right here as Homestead wins 72-31 over the cadets. Let's stay in the SAC. We got Southside hosting the Wayne Generals and uh, Wayne coming off a win over Heritage on Tuesday night. Perhaps this is why. Fourth quarter, it was Amelia Diaz and that is what she does. Cheat the basketball. She drills the three. It's a 60-45 Generals lead. But the Archers thinking comeback. That's Kamani Grayson for three. And Juanita Goodwell's team was not done. How about Justice Billingsley? Going to be one of the stars for this Southside team this year, trying to replace uh, Liv Smith. She gets the lay in there, but Wayne's Shabria O'Quinn. Good to see her back on the basketball court for the Generals this year. She gets the bucket, and Wayne tops Southside 72 59. Down at the Castle, Norwell ranked second in the latest 3A state poll. The Knights hosting 1A number 13, Blackhawk Christian. Pick this one up in the first quarter. Mackenzie Feast with the bucket and Norwell's lead up to seven. More from Norwell. Haley Green to Madison Sonicson with the bucket. Still a seven point lead for the Knights at that point in the ball game. We fast forward now to the second quarter. Malia Steele looking for Allie Boyer and uh, she can do more than play just volleyball even though she's a state champion there. She gets the layup but simply too much Norwell. You'll see Feast to Dakota Hubble. Good look for the bucket, and Norwell takes care of business, 72-28 at the Castle. Let's head to Paul Bateman Gymnasium, a county rivalry renewed, 3-1 and one DeKalb at 1-2 and two Garrett. We pick this one up with a name familiar to most DeKalb basketball fans. It's Lily Cohn, splashing the three. This is part of an 8-zip DeKalb run right out of the gate, so the Barons feeling froggy at Bateman Gymnasium. A little more from Cohn, you'll see Cohn with the steal, and she is going to lay this one in. It's a 10-3 DeKalb lead. Going the other way for Garrett, you'll see Maddie Schenkel bury the three for the Railroaders, but DeKalb is victorious in this one, 35, 45, excuse me, to 34. Final stop for girls hoops. We got Woodland, we got Leo, the Warriors 3-1, and one, the Lions 5-1. and one. Emily Cogdell for the Lions. Carries the first shot of the night to make it a 3 zip Leo lead. Then it's Leo May, the talented Leo standout, dribbling her way in and gets the basket. Leo up 9-8 to eight at that point. Going the other way, it's Woodland time. Brooke Knebular knocking down the jumper to give Woodland a one-point lead. And then it's Taylor Knebular. I think they're related. She gets the bucket, and Woodland goes into Leo and gets a win, 59-54 over the Lions. Stay tuned. We've got some college basketball, and we have it in the form of the IU Hoosiers. IU with its first game on the road, taking on the Xavier Musketeers. It wasn't easy. Pick this one up with under four minutes to go. Trace Jackson Davis doing what he does. It's a 75-68 IU lead, but Xavier chipping away right out a minute to go. Soon lay boom with a three. Now just a one-point game, 80-79 IU. Xavier, a chance to win it with less than 10 to go, but they miss, and IU survives on the road at Xavier, 81-79. In South Bend, Notre Dame off to a 3-0 start. Mike Bray looking to make it 4-0 uh, with a win against Lipscomb. After a slow first half, Nate Leshesky gets going. Irish up by six now in the second half, and you'll see more from the big guy, Leshesky, showing off the range. He had 16 points for the Irish. Now, Lipscomb made a run late. But Dane Goodwin with his sixth three of the night, and that is the game winner as Notre Dame takes it 66-65. The Irish now 4-0. Oh. 
Last stop for Hoopage, the Mastodons with their second game this season against a Big Ten opponent. Dons on the road at Northwestern. Second half, JoJo Peterson with the bucket right there. You're going to see more from the Dons. Damian Chong Kui for three. That would cut it to 10. But Robbie Barron for Northwestern gets the layup here. And PFW can't come up with the upset. They fall on the road 60-52. Stay tuned to Peter Franklin Jewelers. Gentlemen, I coming your way next. This is the Norwell Knights wide out at the castle. More highlight zone after the break. Yeah. Here are the Carroll Chargers. This is Neon Nation. Here's the Joe of the Night. On your number one sports station. Yeah! They were cold, but they got plenty to cheer about last week. It was Jorge Valdez with maybe the defensive play of the year. His diving interception with uh, about a minute to go, sealing the first ever 6A regional title by a team from the Fort Wayne area. After making history last Friday, could we top that? Yeah, we could. Here's your latest gem of the night brought to you by Peter Franklin Jewelers. Last week it was the Carroll defense. This week it's the Carroll offense. Braden Steely in the second quarter with this touchdown run from 15 yards out to give Carroll a 14 6 lead. Take another look at this. Footing at a premium, especially when that turf gets slick. He reverses fields. I don't know how he did it, but the Carroll Chargers get six on this play. And you know what? The Carroll Chargers won by six points as they head to the 6A state championship game. 21-15 was the final, and that is your gem of the night. Hey, next week, the Carroll Chargers will take on Center Grove. That is going to be a tough matchup, but hey, what can Carroll not do? They're champions. They made it to state. 7 o'clock at Lucas Oil Stadium next Friday. And then on Saturday, it's 1A. Adam Central versus Indy Lutheran. Second year in a row these two met. Again, Adam Central fell 38-28 to last season. They are hoping to flip the script on Lutheran this season. 11 o'clock at Lucas Oil Stadium. We'll have complete coverage of both those games here on Wayne TV. But for Josh, I'm Glenn, and we'll see you next Friday night.